Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at a creature that needs no introduction, but which I am going to introduce anyway. Bigfoot, likely the most famous cryptid of all time. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, is a huge, hairy, humanoid ape that supposedly lives in the United States and Canada, and it follows in the tradition of wild, unknown apes that supposedly live all around the world. While it being a real creature is unlikely, belief in its existence is quite widespread. In fact, people all over the United States constantly hunt for evidence of the elusive Bigfoot and keep their efforts despite their lack of success so far. An extremely similar case is that of the skunk ape, another cryptid from the southeastern United States, which I decided to add to the video due to their shared characteristics. Reading on both apes, I decided it would make a lot of sense to make them close relatives, something I'll explain in more detail right in a moment. For now, Let's take a look at this cryptid and see what it would be like as a real living animal. So, without further ado, let's get started. Until not long ago, it was believed that the Bigfoot, scientific name Ameropithecus megalopodia dasos, was no more than a legend, until developments in surveillance and drone technology led to the discovery of their enormous familiar groups and as a result, knowledge of this creature exploded in popularity all over the world. This technology, fortunately, means we can now study them without intruding too far into their territory. These North American apes evolved from three dwelling South American monkeys that migrated north, more specifically, monkeys belonging to family Aotide commonly known as night monkeys or owl monkeys. The evolution of the Bigfoot followed a path notably similar to that of Dimopithecus borealis, the European troll, favoring an increase in size that reduced their attractive to potential predators, followed by a tendency towards bipedal locomotion that facilitated their movement and expansion when they reached the more arid northern regions of Mexico. The tail all but disappeared during this evolution towards a bipedal lifestyle, no longer needed to either hold onto trees or keep balance on the ground. Due to their enormous size, the feet of these apes have grown out of proportion, helping them more easily distribute their weight. These feet and their equally enormous footprints are what gave them their name. As they finally found themselves in their modern habitat in the forest areas of the United States and Canada, their nocturnal lifestyle in a more steep environment led to the development of a tapetum lucidum, a reflecting cell layer that improves visibility in poor lighting, unheard of in other species of primate. This layer is what produces the reflective eyes often seen during the night in other animals. These apes inhabit the forest areas of Canada and the United States, where they have enough space to roam freely and feed on fruits, berries, roots, leaves and stems of plants. Their diet is extremely varied, and they will occasionally supplement it with meat and insects if available. Their dense fur coat, colored black or dark brown, helps them blend into their habitat. Immature Bigfoot are reddish brown that becomes darker as they become of age. This young can easily reach 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall, an already impressive size for apes, and upon maturing, the tallest males may reach 3 meters or 10 feet tall. The enormous arms and strong shoulders of these creatures betray their tree-dwelling ancestry as their forebears used them to more easily travel among the branches. In these bipedal animals, these arms are now useful to use their enormous strength to modify their environment, mostly as a way to search for food or clear their nesting sites. 
Their face is almost completely devoid of fur, allowing these apes very precise facial expressions, their main way of communication. Males, however, tend to have slightly denser fur around their face and head, at times even forming a slight beard. As males are solitary, there is no such need for communication, and so the further development of their fur has no negative consequences in their survival and chances of mating. Instead of precise communication, male Bigfoot will signal their availability for reproduction through their smell. Certain strong smelling compounds are produced during mating season, which are quite attractive to females. Humans who have smelled these compounds have said they were not to their liking, to say the least. While male Bigfoot are solitary, having abandoned their packs upon reaching maturity, females and young will remain together in big matriarchal groups, which males will only approach during mating season. These family groups tend to live within confined territories, which can be quite extensive. Inside these habitats, the Bigfoot will travel constantly in search of food, sleeping at night in simple nests created from vegetation, which can be made in a matter of minutes and abandoned without much trouble. In order to delimitate their territory, groups of Bigfoot will create signals by uprooting small trees and arranging them in particular ways, or similarly bending branches and trees. Other groups of Bigfoot will see these signs and turn right around, lest they cause a confrontation with the resident apes. Males of the species, meanwhile, will live by themselves, not retaining a hold over any particular territory. They will travel freely in and out of female-owned territories, but always remain unseen by the big groups. Although some young males will stay together after abandoning their groups, they will eventually drift away as they reach maturity. As male Bigfoot do not have a delimited territory, they have different methods to avoid confrontations with other Sasquatch. For instance, whenever they are about to go to sleep or sit down for a meal, male Bigfoot will try to make as much noise as possible by hitting trees, throwing rocks or howling, thus warning other Bigfoot of their presence and telling them in no uncertain terms to stay as far away as possible. In fact, Bigfoot, both males and females, have an amazingly wide vocal range and will communicate over distances by screaming, howling, roaring, grunting and even whistling. Through these noises, the Bigfoot have managed to create a primitive language that helps them express a variety of simple emotions and thoughts that are beyond what their facial expression is capable of conveying. As can be inferred from their interactions with members of their own species, Bigfoot are quite timid despite their notable strength and size, and will rarely enter conflict with other animals. Even when confronted by human beings, much smaller than any adult Bigfoot, these gentle apes prefer to escape rather than attacking. However, they are still very curious, as befitting such smart animals, and will often venture near human settlements, taking with them any food and small treasures they may find. There have been even reports of human beings who were kidnapped by a group of Bigfoot, albeit without using violence or excessive force. These kidnappings were usually performed by grieving mothers that had just lost their young, and probably found in the small human a substitute on which they could place their attention. These humans, in the end, were let free as soon as the mother had processed the loss of their baby, allowed to simply walk away, uninjured except for the trauma of the whole situation. While these creatures tended to be quite easygoing, some young males have been known to vent their frustrations by attacking other animals, especially dogs and deer, which they will throw with great force. These events happen mostly around mating season, when more mature and stronger males outcompete the young ones. 
A close relative of the Bigfoot is a creature known as the skunk ape, a subspecies named Amerpithecus megalopodia floridiensis. Mainly found across Georgia, Alabama and, as their name suggests, Florida, the skunk ape inhabits hotter environments, characterized by denser but much smaller vegetation than the enormous trees in the Bigfoot's forests. As a result, this subspecies tends to be much smaller, rarely exceeding 2 meters or 6.5 feet in height. This smaller size means they can not only hide in the vegetation more easily, but also travel through it unfettered. Their reddish-brown forecoat is lighter in color than that of the Bigfoot, and mottled to help them more easily blend into their environment. The social structure of the skunk ape is almost identical to that of the Bigfoot, although in this habitat familiar groups tend to be much smaller and have more reduced territories. Unfortunately for those who share their habitat with skunk apes, the already notable smell of their forest cousins is further amplified in this new environment. This is due to the heat, which facilitates the volatilization of the smelly secretions of the skunk ape making their smell so potent as to earn them their name. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Bigfoot and the closely related skunk ape. I'll admit, at first, I feared the information on this creature was going to be limited to monkey big. But upon further research, I found so many behaviors attributed to this creature to paint a really good picture of its ecology. Could a creature like this exist? Technically, yes, in the sense that it does not necessarily go against the laws of nature or physics, but it would be very unlikely. A creature that size would have already led to more convincing evidence and likely undisputable proof such as droppings, bones, or hair that could not be mistaken for that of other animals. Not to mention, there would be fossil evidence of a clade of huge apes existing in the continent. While there are tons of reports about this one, it is most likely that the sightings and evidence are just hoaxes and misidentifications, especially of half-seen bears. Hoaxes, well, are always going to happen with things like this and the misidentifications are natural. After all, it is very reasonably hard to be observant and rational when confronted with the backlit eyes or the house of a wild animal, or straight up seeing a bear out of nowhere. I also noted both Bigfoot and the skunk ape have been noted as having a terrible smell, which is actually a pretty rude thing to say. Shame on you, witnesses, shame! I'm just kidding, of course but it is something that definitely stood out. Also worth mentioning, there is supposed evidence of Native American populations already seeing Bigfoot or Bigfoot-like creatures, and I'd like to note this is not necessarily true as being the same phenomenon. The archetype of the wild man, a distinctly humanoid but uncivilized creature, is very extended in human cultures. It does not mean that the world is populated by huge hairy apes or wild people, but that there is a common origin to all those myths, found in the ancient history of humanity. As amazing as it would be to find a species of huge bipedal apes living in North America, I believe this one is just a myth, but a clearly very popular one. So I hope you guys are happy with the end result. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting the channel on Ko-fi, link available in the video's description. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.